Folks, I've got something I want to talk about today, but first, um, I'm recording this video in a slightly different format. Uh, recently, I've noticed um, when sort of previewing uh, my videos once they make it to YouTube to make sure there's no glitches or anything in there, that the quality of my videos is extremely poor, which I do not understand. I record them in high def, 1920 by 1080p. They look great on my computer, they look great on my phone, but once I upload them to YouTube, the video quality goes to absolute shit. So I'm recording this in a slightly different format to try to remedy that problem. So uh, keep your fingers crossed. Now the subject I wanted to talk about today is something that is kind of taboo in the sharpening community and that's sort of mixing and combining grits. Now anybody that is extremely serious about sharpening, myself included, um, makes an effort to keep their sharpening stone straps etc uh, separated so there is no grit contamination and I must admit that I do take some uh, very preventative measures to make sure that uh, there is no contamination I keep my straps completely separate at no time does the surface touch that of another strap of a different grit um, I keep them in a place where there is no dust contamination or anything like that because it is extremely frustrating when you end up with some grit on your strap and you're finishing off an edge you know putting a big old scratch in it from some sort of great contamination or dust or something like that on your strop. So what I've been experimenting lately with is uh, as you can see diamond paste I've got the whole set here ranging from uh, 0.25 micron to 40 micron so it's a pretty good range uh, and lately I've been experimenting with multiple uh, different grits on the same strap and I gotta say I'm loving the results now the benefit to this uh, from my past month or so of experimentation is that you sort of end up with all the benefits of a sort of coarse toothy edge combined with the benefits of a highly polished edge so you get a lot of slicing aggression but you are able to make clean 90 degree push cuts through phone book paper. You're able to whittle hair, but at the same time, you don't have to deal with uh, the problems that you get with the highly polished edge, which is, you know, uh, wanting to skip off an item you're cutting that is sort of a, uh, you know, spongy, soft, hard, something like that. It really just depends on the material. So this is one of the straps uh, that I have been experimenting with. On this side right here, it, disregard these numbers, this was the original um, that I made. Uh, this side contains a little bit of 28 micron, 20 micron, and then 14 micron. And this side uh, is a combination of mainly 7 micron, 10 micron, but then a little bit of 5 micron and 3.5 micron mixed in. Um, this side right here leaves a ridiculous edge just it, it it'll blow your mind how sharp and grabby and high performance the edge, edge is after hitting this side this side over here leaves kind of a uh, a coarse almost unrefined feeling because it is a much larger you know abrasive size um, but it removes material a lot faster so a lot of time I'll go from this side to this side and get just an amazing edge so here I have just a cheap BS knife that I've reground and that I've stropped on the strop and when cutting plastic with a highly polished edge a lot of time the problem you'll run into is that the edge will not bite into the plastic you'll just want to skip off and that can lead to injury but the benefit of the strop is that uh, you can just bite in and make a clean cut through it no problem and it's not what I consider super thin plastic but uh, it is a challenge to cut if your knife is not reasonably sharp but the edge will also vary I don't really have any hair but uh, cleanly shave hair and dig into your skin and possibly cut you as I just did we'll see if that bleeds as the video progresses um, 
so really it is it is something to try um, I'm really liking the results something I have found though is that depending on the steel type hardness alloy content um, the size of the abrasive is going to have to change now some steels uh, very just poor cheap steels you can use the relatively high um, abrasive side you know up to about 10 micron and you'll get a pretty good edge now if you're using higher end steels that are heat treated a little bit better I'm not talking about any sort of you know high end super alloys but uh you know D2 um, it, you know even uh, HCR 13 MOV uh, AUS 8 um, you can take those to a much lower grit size uh, for those steels right now I'm working with uh, a mix of between 0 0.5 and 1.5 microns and uh, really that for those type of steels seems to give you the best edge that is absolutely screaming sharp and it really it just it cuts better and it cuts better longer and it looks like I'm starting to bleed a little bit so as you can see I was just trying to shave myself and the edge bit in enough to cut me so they are quite sharp. Um, another thing <clears throat> that is beneficial about this process is with carbon steels or steels with really no primary carbides in them, um, you can't really take them to a very high grit and still maintain any slicing aggression because there's really no carbides. Once you hit a certain point, your slicing aggression just goes downhill and very dramatically. But by doing this, you sort of get an edge that will hair, yet cuts very aggressively. So you sort of get the best of both worlds, and that's the main reason why I'm making this video. Now, I will say that I have noticed when using the grits above about 7 micron um, that you really need to sort of change the strops, strops, ugh, I can't talk, stropping surface a little bit. Um, when I make strops, I typically make them with the grain side up, that is the sort of smooth side with the little pores in it. But when you're using these larger grit sizes, you really need to use the uh, the split side, the side with the, the nap, or some people call it suede, the side with the little uh, fuzzy leather hairs on it, and that's just what this is, because it holds the larger grit size much better. Now, uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to both you know, uh, split side and grain side strops. Typically, my much lower uh, micron size strops are going to be the, the grain size, and that's because it's a much more consistent, you know, surface finish on the strop, and it really allows you to take an edge to really as, as keen as you can get it, just completely beyond hair whittling, crazy sharp. Whereas these do leave much more aggressive edges when you do use sort of the split side of the leather. And I'm bleeding more. So, just some food for thought. Maybe if you have some uh, diamond paste laying around or some old straps, give it a try. I mean, don't do anything too drastic like mixing quarter micron and 40 micron because that'll just uh, give you some kind of wacky edges. But if the micron size is, I'd say, within, you know, about, you know, 7, 10 microns of each other. It, it should give you a quite nice edge. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, this video quality comes out much better than my previous ones, and I will see you soon.